Well, hi everybody. Bruce here with another finger picking technique lesson. Today we're going to go into a song written by J.D. Loudermilk, made famous by Chet Atkins, called Windy and Warm. Sometimes Chet would use this little intro, especially when he was being backed up by a band or an orchestra. The way that little intro goes is we start out with uh, sort of the main motif that the song uses, which is an A minor. Uh, we're rotating, uh, in this case, just off of the fifth string and the sixth string, so it's like that. Um, I am muting with my little finger here, like this, uh, but if you use a thumb pick, uh, you can mute with the, the palm of your hand. Like that, and you get a really nice sound. I, I don't use a thumb pick anymore, so I use some different techniques, one of which is to use my little finger here like this. But anyway, you start out with a... Um, and then a... And that eighth note, so it's... One, two, three, four, one, and two, three, four. And then you go up to an A sharp minor bar chord here on the sixth fret, and you just walk this chord all the way down to a, a F minor like this. I like to rotate, instead of just hitting the same note all the way down, I like to rotate off the sixth and the fifth string, so I'll sixth string, fifth string, sixth string, fifth string end up with the uh, F minor down here. Now you'll notice that your ring finger in is, is in a position here to slide up to this higher E here. It goes down to an E major, but if you uh, go down to this E major, it's kind of a letdown. So what you want to do is you want to slide up to this E seventh up here by taking your ring finger, sliding it up here to the seventh fret, and then making a chord that looks like a C seventh. That's your intro. Now this song is written in a musical form called a rondo. And the way a rondo works is that you have a main theme and then you go in different digressions and diversions and experimentations away from that theme, but you always come back to that theme. So let me fast forward through the entire song to kind of show you the format of how the song is put together. The main theme, that part right there, and then we have a that we'll call that the A section, and then we'll have a B section that goes like... And then we'll have the A section again. And then we'll have a, a C section. And then we have the A section again. And then we have a D section. And then we return to the main theme again. And then we end up with an E section, which is... Um, each one of these non-A sections rotates between, alternates between um, a major and a minor key. So the first one's in a minor, the second one's in a major, and then the third one is in a minor, and then the fourth one is in a major. So that's the way the song works. It's got um, an A, B, C, D, and E section, and that does not include the intro and the ending. So now let's go into the main theme, or the A section of the song. We use an A minor open chord here, uh, and we hammer our ring finger here, which is the A. We hammer that off of the G. At the same time, we're playing this a root, and we're going to play a three string rotating bass, so the five, four, six, four, five, four, six, four. In the intro, we only played the five, six, five, six. Now we're going to go to a three string rotating uh, bass chord. So now it's going to go like this. So the lead part of that. And then we 
bend up this little finger here on the second string and then back down and then back to the C in the A minor chord and then back to the A in the A minor chord so it goes and then the uh, second part of that goes like this then you take your little finger and slide it up here to the fifth fret and hit your first string third fret with your first finger and then slide this little finger back down back down to that C in the A minor chord and then you're just inside that A minor chord here with the um, A G A alright so that's just the lead part now I'll show you how the rotating bass part fits in with that in the intro we played a two note rotating bass between the fifth string and the sixth string like that. Now we're going to go to a three note, five, four, six, four. We hammer the A note in the A minor chord at the same time we pinch the A root like that and that's how we start the sequence off. Then to integrate that rotating bass in with the lead part that I just showed you, I'll play it really slowly for you here. After you play the intro, you play that A section that I just showed you twice. You only play it twice at the beginning. After that, when you come back to that a section or the main motif after a B, C, D, or E section. You only play it once, otherwise it becomes too repetitive. And here's where you want to use your, if you're using a thumb pick, here's where you want to mute with your your palm. Listen to the way Chet Atkins plays it. Now, I have a variation of this that I use, which is a, a walking bass, but I won't get into that right here because this isn't, that's not really the, the way that it's usually played, but just to let you know how it sounds, it goes. That. But if you use a thumb pick, you can you can mute. I use that walking bass because I can mute the walking bass with my finger. Otherwise it's difficult for me to mute those strings while I'm playing that A minor chord and it's better not to have them ring out. Now here's the B section. The B section you just take your A minor chord and you slide it up two frets and then you slide up to a major, looks like a major form of an A here on the fifth fret and then back and then down to your A minor so it goes and then there are several different ways you can play this but so just and you just lift the chord and then come back to this emphasize this A note here and then uh, use this G note here after the first time through and then we go to a D minor and we pull off the F note your first finger here And then E and then that little run just pull that off and then back to your A minor again then you're back to your A section again the C section takes a G flat seventh and slides it up to a G seventh like this. So you can play that without playing the first string in the chord. And then when you f come up here to the um, full 
G seventh chord, you can play the full chord or at least the upper part of the chord like that. And then play the lead off of the first string, sixth fret, fifth fret, and then down to the bar and then back up to the fifth. And then you go to a C seventh in this form where you use these two fingers and freeze up your little finger to play the same pattern again. And then we have a F seventh, and then the same pattern played in the F. And then a D seventh, and you pull off the first note, the first string, like that. And then an E. And then this little run that goes starting on the first string, but Pull that off and use a lot of pull offs here. So let me play that section. And we're back to our A section again. Now the D section is sort of a mirror image of the B section. The B section, if you recall, went like this. This is going to do the same thing up here in an A minor on the fifth fret. I play the A minor with just the ring finger on the root note here, and I do not play this fifth string, so I rotate between the sixth and the fourth string. After I came out of that A minor, I went into a D minor that is a 5th um, fret, 6th fret, 7th fret, and an open D, and pull off, pull off the 1st string, and then just work between the 1st and the 2nd string back and forth. And then it, this little run here that I made up in E, That's uh, on the ninth fret, we're working on the second and third strings. We have both on the ninth fret here. We fly down to the seventh fret, but we have the sixth and the seventh. Then we slide down to the fifth fret, and we have both on the fifth. And then we slide down to the third and fourth fret. And then that slides right back into your A minor, and you're right back into your A section again. The E section goes like this. section again. So we have a an A major chord here using a, a bar with our first finger and we play the lead off of the first string fifth fret third fret and then the second string fifth fret. And we have a pull off here. And then we come up here to a E seventh sharp ninth. Now, if you if you know B seven and you slide it up here to the seventh fret, you have an E seventh. If you know a B seventh and you can make a ninth by moving it down, moving your little finger to the second string, and you move it up to the seventh fret. Now you have an E ninth. You take this ninth note here with your little finger and slide it up one fret to a sharp ninth. So now you have an E seven sharp ninth. Now you can play uh, this E note is obviously a root and it's obviously in tune, but it's awful low compared to the rest of the chord. So I like to play this rotating bass like this. I think it sounds a little bit better than like.
like that. So let me show you something here. You're going to probably have to practice this just standalone for a while, but it sounds like this. This is a little bit that's in there. So we've got the rotating bass going here. And then we pull off this ninth, sharp ninth, down to hit that note on the third string. And then you go back to your sharp ninth and go up and hit an open first string. And then you take your sharp ninth off, your little finger off, and you go one, three, two, one. So practice that for a while until you can kind of get that down. Okay, after we come out of that little lick, go to an A7, little finger, and then we go to a D7, That's, that note slides right down into a D7. And then we come down to a D ninth. You know, we've been playing a an E nine sharp nine seven sharp nine. We have a, now we play a D same chord except that it's not a sharp ninth. It's just a ninth. So D seven D ninth, and then we hit a full A chord. And then we hit this bass line here, starting at the C note, fifth string, third fret. And then hit the E in an E, E note in an E chord. Like that, okay? So. Then we're right back into our last A section. But that little walk right there reminds me of something important I forgot to tell you. Remember I said we play the intro and then we go into the first A section by hammering the A. And then I told you that we play two A sections. But when we finish the A section and we come into the second A section, we come into it with a like that. So let me show you that. Let's say at the end of the first A section, then we go. So that's the way we come into the section, second A section. Now I forgot to tell you that. Well, we've arrived at our last A section, and we have to start thinking about how we're going to segue out of the song. And here's an ending that I like to put on it. Let me just play the end of the A section and then the ending. Chet Atkins must have played this song a million times during his career, and he was always coming up with new little inventions and variations, and I think this just fits into um, the kind of variations or um, changes that he would put into his song. He was always trying to think up new ways to, uh, to make the song interesting and keep it interesting for himself. This is not an ending that I've heard anywhere. I just made it up, but I think it kind of fits the feeling of the song. The way it works is that this is an F major seventh. If you make a partial F like this and then you drop the uh, first string and you leave it open, you have an F major seventh. Then you come down to a E seventh and then an A minor with walking the, uh, walking the bass note down. And then the same thing again, uh, an F major 7th. And you notice that I use kind of a different picking style just because it's the end. You could go anything you want there, doesn't matter. And then, and then 
A minor, and then you run A minor chord there, and then come up to this A minor chord up here, but add this suspended second. This will be your little finger on the seventh fret. Gives it that nice feeling at the end. And then this little run that I came up with uh, in the E. Hello there. Would you sit down, please, so Daddy can play guitar?